Howdy! Welcome back! This will be video number two for the horizontal stabilizer. Uh, last video basically spent the time uh, getting everything prepped and ready to go. Um, so you'll see these parts here have been prepped, primed, uh, ready to move forward. I'm going to knock out a couple of burrs that I found um, in a couple of these holes here. So I'll knock those out real quick and we'll get to riveting. Uh, so hopefully you like these videos. Um, if you do, please hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Helps the channel grow and get the video out to other people. And if you want to see anything else, if I'm missing anything that you want to see or you have any feedback or comments, feel free to comment down below. Uh, really looking to maximize the, the value that I'm adding to you and uh, make this whole process um, fun and efficient. So yeah, we'll get to things. I'll uh, quit talking and we'll get to building an airplane part. So here's something I learned that helps out quite a bit uh, when it comes to these uh, countersunk portions. The, when you go to prime it, the primer actually builds up quite a thick layer to where if I go to put this, um, this countersunk rivet in, it's going to stand far more proud than it should. Um, I think it's probably standing up. Yeah, you can't really see, but it's enough of a standoff that I would want to countersink it further. Um, but when I uh, had countersunk it prior to priming, it fit perfectly. Um, so anyways, just use a little uh, countersink cutter head and spin it by hand and it'll just knock off uh, just the right amount of paint. Um, so you'll see momentarily here. So I didn't remove any, any uh, aluminum there or anything, just the paint itself and now it's, it's perfectly fine. Um, so yeah, you can totally use these uh, just to spin it by hand and knock off that primer. And these stands are definitely helpful here. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I think in the last video, I jumped ahead a page or so to, to build these stands while I was waiting on that. Um, angle, angle aluminum to come in and the stands are really nice for holding this off the table. I don't know how you do this uh, without it being held up in, uh, in some fashion. So here's a quick uh, quick check-in for where we are now. Um, I didn't get any of this on video here, getting the uh, the skins put on and spars and ribs and whatnot put together. Main reason being because you're going to see it all come apart and all be dimpled and all put back together. So you didn't miss out too much. Um, it's really just clicking and everything together, uh, kind of like a mock-up to make sure that everything is going to be lined up right. Um, as far as the final size holes go, um, it's kind of iffy. It's kind of interesting. So. This year, Vans made a change uh, with their kits, uh, with the, at least with this RV10 here, um, where all of the parts are going to start coming final sized. And final size doesn't mean match drilled, uh, but it still means that all the parts aren't going to have to. There's a, a certain step in the process. Um, so let me flip that microphone around that way. It don't sound like I'm a mile away. But anyways, there's a step in the process that involves getting these skins all put on here and then bringing them all, all of them up to final size. So they'll come, they used to come um, just a hair under that number 40 drill bit size. Um, and now they actually come true to size. So what makes it interesting is that all the instructions still remain the same as far as put all the parts together, click everything together, final size everything, um, remove all the parts, prime, deeper, dimple. Um, so it gets interesting because you could almost get away with with skipping that and, and jumping ahead. My only worry with that, um, and I'm not sure if there's any other builders out there who have uh, 
the same awkward in between stage that we're at right now with the build or with the, with the plans. Uh, but my issue with it is if there's anything that you put it together and then have to match drill something, or if you have to uh, fabricate something and then match it to whatever you're making. So it gets kind of interesting. Um, not sure if all that makes sense or not, but hopefully it does. But what, what I do is I still stick to, stick to all the plans. So I've got everything all up to size here. And then I go back and verify. So if it says like one of these next steps is gonna involve um, final size uh, drilling all of the holes on the skins here. So I'll go back through and just take the, the butt end of a, of a number 40 drill and just verify that it's actually going to, uh, going to fit inside. So you'll see, I have not drilled any of this yet and it already fits there. Um, and occasionally I'll have some, like I'll, I'll get to this point here, um, where they may be under tension or for whatever reason, uh, there may be a burn side where things aren't gonna, aren't gonna be absolutely perfect. Um, and this happened here. So what, what happened was, um, all of these holes here are eighth inch holes, and it's for these, uh, I think they call these stringers here. Um, but anyway, they're uh, basically these stringers that go in here, they go about to, not to, to here in the uh, horizontal stabilizer, um, but there's like three pieces of material involved here, and they all are truly two size, so they're all final size uh, from bands. Um, but it seems like whenever you get more than like two layers of material, um, the odds of having some kind of a burr in there or some kind of just slight misalignment, um, whether it's like a 32nd of an inch or 64th or whatever. Um, but what I had to do is during the process here, which I could have easily skipped ahead and missed this, which is why I want to bring it up, is part of the, the instructions here call for using an angle drill to get in here and final size all of these holes here. They all are, already were final size from Vans. I went back through and just double checked it with the drill bit and there was a lot of resistance, but I could still make it work. So I actually like, forcibly pushed a one eighth, one eighth inch rivet in there and it would have worked. Um, but I didn't like the idea of forcing something together. So went to Harbor Freight, got this angle drill attachment. It works absolutely beautifully. Um, I did have to modify the number uh, number 30 drill bit. I had to, to cut off like an inch off the bottom or so. So I just took one of my old nasty drill bits that was near the end of life and put it in there. And it works really well. So I was able just to go back through and um, and just verify, just drill slowly, drop the drill in there. Really not much material was removed. I think it was really just little burrs. Um, but just wanted to check in here and see if anyone else, what anyone else is doing. Um, like I said, it's, it's weird having the plan say that you have to go back and final size everything. And it's very tempting to be able to just to jump ahead in the process and like, oh, I don't need to do that. I'll just skip all this, go ahead and, and dimple it and get it all riveted together, which I think could have some, uh, if something does go wrong, it would really be a, a bummer to, to start riveting everything and realizing that, oh, I should have actually gone back through and, and verified that those final size holes were actually matched up and, uh, and aligned. Um, so anywho, I'll quit talking here. Um, but if anyone else is building a 10 or anything else that's final size, I'd love to hear um, if anyone is still going through, sticking to the plans, checking everything, pulling it all apart and going back in and riveting from there or if people are finding a workaround to, to jump ahead. Um, but where it gets a little bit more interesting is, uh, is there's a shortage in Clecos uh, with wedge lock specifically. So when I ordered my kit from Cleveland, uh, Cleveland Aircraft Tools, they sent me quick lock instead and also sent me probably a third or a half of what was required for the build. So you'll see, I'll, I'll pull that camera out real quick. You'll see it's, uh, I'm spread thin, I'm down to, down to four left. So I went and bought 300 more today. So hopefully they'll arrive soon. But you'll see how spread thin I am where I'm really working, working with what I have. I only have a hundred, I think it was a hundred or 150 total of these, uh, these silver 332nd inch uh, Clecos. Um, you'll see I'm pretty spread thin. I'm not comfortable moving forward at this point to rivet it all together. I'd love to be able to get far more rivets on here, make it far more rigid before I get to uh, doing any kind of squeezing, bucking or anything like that. Um, so there'll be a little bit more of a delay. I ordered it today, um, so hopefully we'll have that shipping in in the next week or so, and then we'll be able to actually get through and start putting all this together. But I think during the during the time being here, I'm going to go back and make sure all my holes are lining up right, kind of shimmy some clicos around, verify everything, and we'll see what else we can do. Um, but yeah, next video will hopefully be deconstructing this and getting everything dimpled and riveted together. And we'll have another completed aircraft party, which is pretty cool to have. 
So we'll see you in the next video here. Actually, yeah. See you in the next video here. It's either going to be a whole new video or we're going to jump ahead to the future when I have more Quinkos. So if so, you'll see Austin in the future with 300 more Quinkos. See you then. All right, so I actually will end the video here. I don't want to make too long of a video. Um, I'm trying to keep it right around this 10 minute mark. Um, so I do have a backlog of footage to get through. Um, the part is, as of today, fully done. Um, so I'll try to get that, uh, get that worked out and get a video out by the end of the week here. Um, it has a lot of really good content, a lot of tricks, tips, and stuff learned along the way throughout that build. Um, so yeah, look for that, uh, that video later this week. Um, and then if you want to stay truly up to date as far as where I'm at today, right up to the minute, go ahead and follow my Instagram page. Um, I post that it's a personal page, so it's a, it'll have some mountain biking stuff, some real estate stuff, um, but I do try to post stories whenever I can of, of what I'm doing and what I'm working on on the plane. Um, so follow me there. I'll leave a link in the description of the video here. Um, but yeah, if you made it this far, appreciate you watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Adios.